On this page of notes, we're going to look at a specific example of problem solving a question where we're looking at average speed, displacement, and average velocity. And what I want to focus on here is having you understand how to read the question and mark it up in terms of variables that are given to you in the question that allow you to go then to the equations and problem solve the problem. Now, just because you come to something that's given in the problem, like here we have, if the bumblebee starts at the two mile mark, if you're unsure what the two mile mark is, don't mark it up right away. Read the entire question and then go back and look to see what the numbers that were given in the problem actually represent in terms of variables for problem solving. So let's do that. If the bumblebee starts at the two mile mark and it takes her one hour to get to the origin, so let's, let's start marking this up. She starts down here, so look down here at the bumblebee. At the two mile mark, we're told it takes her one hour to get to the origin, following a zigzaggy path. So here, we're actually looking at a two-dimensional motion where we won't typically do that. I'm only using a two-dimensional motion here to illustrate the point. Her final position here, after the first part of her trip, is certainly one-dimensional, still on the x-axis. But we're told that she then follows a zigzaggy path and the total distance is three miles for the first part of the trip. So let's just leave it and read the rest of the question before we start making our, our variable determinations. It then takes her 0.75 hours to go from the origin back to the one mile mark along again a zigzaggy path where that as I have indicated here is 1.5 miles in 0.75 hours. So I haven't translated it into variables. She ends the trip, ends this question at the one mile mark here. So now let's start putting in some of our variables that we'll be able to use to problem solve the problem. Well, she starts at the two mile mark. That's her initial x position. So let's get that in there. So the two mile mark is her initial x position. Now, she travels three miles, as we said here, in one hour to get to the origin. That's not her final position for this problem, so I'm not going to mark that as x final, the origin. The three miles she travels, however, I'm going to mark as I'm going to mark as a distance d1. So that's the distance she travels on the first part of her trip. It takes her one hour uh, to do that. So that I'm going to mark as t1. So the first part of her trip, distance one, time one. It then takes her 0.75 hours. That I'm going to mark as a time t2 to go from the origin back to the one mile mark. And that's going to be her x final on the x axis. And that distance she traveled, total distance, I'm going to put down here as a d2, the distance she traveled during the second part of her trip. So now that I have it lined up in my mind, I understand the sequencing through the problem, putting all of this information into our equations to problem solve it really should not be that bad, but let's see what we're doing. So we have average speed equals distance over time. Speed equals distance over time. Total distance, d1, 3, plus 1.5, d2. So we get a total distance of 4.5 miles. Total time, t1 plus t2, 1.57 hours. So now you can see we are just lined up and all ready to go to numerically problem solve the problem. x final minus x initial, same deal. So x final was position positive 1 on the x-axis minus x initial, which is x initial was plus 2 meters on the x-axis. So the displacement, remember, which is the net movement based on position only, endpoints only matter, said that it was one unit, in this case one mile, the negative is to the left, and that x with the little 
almost triangle, a little point on top, is called an x hat, but for us that's just direction. So one mile in the negative x direction. We then have the average velocity delta x over delta t. So we take our delta x that we just calculated, divided by the delta t, the total time that it took, the 1.75 hours, and we got negative, so backwards, 0 0.571 miles per hour in the x direction, and this is important, so please get this down into your notes. The interpretation of average velocity physically can be thought of, so I'm going to explode this guy here, right? so get this down into your notes. We can think of the average velocity as kind of the average drift of the bumblebee to the left. So regardless of all the zigging and zagging that it was doing, so even if I, I don't care about the zigging and zagging, all I care about is on average, how much did this bumblebee move along the x-axis? The average velocity in the x direction, delta x over delta t, tells me that. So on average, it was drifting to the left at five, or 0 0.571 miles per hour, and the negative, of course, indicates that it was to the left. The last piece of information I have on this page of notes, as I have stated here, is really uh, addressed more in multiple choice questions, but certainly a concept I hope we understand at this point. And that is that the total distance traveled will always be greater than or equal to the delta x, the displacement. So shortest distance, right, the d, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. So that's why uh, that fact is correct. And then if that fact is correct, the same is true for speed and average velocity. So the average velocity represents the drift in the x direction. That will always be less than or equal to the average speed, and hopefully that makes sense, but if that still is a little fuzzy to you, we certainly can talk about that or any of these con concepts in class, so hopefully that gives you an idea of the structure of problem solving. We have some problems now for you to look at, and hopefully you have the tools to be able to accomplish that.